you know, if you tell me a crossover based multi way speakers, I'm going to say sorry. Ah, uh, been there, done that. I'm not going to go back. There's no way you want to go back to this something once you experience it. And you know something is better. The problem is most people don't. They don't know the difference. And I always say, please do yourself a favor. Just take one single driver, connect it to your output of your amplifier and listen to it. Or the easiest experiment is open up your speaker, bypass the crossover. Just two, two wires, bypass it. Connect it to your amplifier, listen to it. You don't have to fully blast the whole thing. Just listen to it and listen. Don't l listen for the uh, tonalities or anything. Just listen how it sounds and how much more wealth of detail one gets and how much more agile or everything started sounding. Just listen for these sort of things. I'm not inventing anything. It's just my experience by building multiple different loudspeakers. If you understand that sort of relationship, then it will, you will end up in the same position as we are. If it makes my sound worse, why do I need this? So it's a very logical and rational and informed choice. And I can only urge anybody to just perform that simple experiment. Anybody who starts with uh, learning about acoustics, the easiest uh, way to start building speakers is not actually in cabinets, but going back to the original a baffle and having drivers in them. That's how I started. Uh, being inspired by many uh, DIY projects, uh, my budget was extremely low and I wanted the best possible sound. And all the commercial available speakers back then either didn't sound convincing to me, uh, they didn't sound that great or costed significantly higher than I could afford back then. So I started with open back and these projects started as low as single, two driver, three driver. And as I had a little bit more money, I moved into a, a three way with a 15 inch Alnico magnet based woofer. I uh, very quickly started uh, to realize that it is very difficult to make two drivers, especially that one is specializing in one sort of frequency and the other one is specializing in a different frequency. Much easier was to work with full range drivers because a full range driver already offers you uh, a much wider frequency range. And technically speaking, a full range driver offers us the most important part of the uh, uh, audible frequency spectrum. It was just a question, how do we get the upper and the lower octaves of the sound? For the upper octaves, we obviously would use a tweeter and for the lower one, we would use a woofer. And it was very intuitive to me in order to get uh, a very coherent sound. All these drivers have had to have uh, similar uh, materials that the magnets were made of. Uh, coal material should be uh, very similar. Otherwise, what happens essentially is that one has every material has a secondary resonance. When something moves and resonates, it, it has the secondary characteristics. So every driver has its own character and signature made up of this material. The sound of its cone, the sound of its chassis, its basket, its magnet, its voice coil, everything that goes inside this uh, assembly of a, of a driver comes back in, as a part of the sound. The different materials would not just simply make as a one sound. If, for example, uh, the crossover, the cornering frequency would be splitting up certain frequencies and the instrument then would be playing, one part would be playing something cold sounding and then something else would be warm sounding, then you have, you can hear this. And that comes from two different sources, from two different drivers, even they are very close to each other. You can hear a dissonance. And even uh, I ended up with everything being the same, you still have all these drivers not singing coherently as one. Well. Every sort of attempt in the crossing them over with almost perfection and in their uh, frequency response and everything else that comes with it, they still dynamically, they will never sound as one driver. It is physically not possible. I was thinking what's going on. One gets used to the sound and then one forgets about it until one day. And I have still these speakers and we can show them. These are the speakers that had a combination of very unique driver. 
That is, uh, that was the Altec, I think it called uh, Altec Biflex. It was taken from Santana guitar amplifier, which is basically a full range driver, 15 inch and an eight inch. And the eight inch is basically glued inside the 15 inch uh, cone with the soft surround. And they all share the same voice coil. So this driver was then, was in, in the open baffle. And I tried to integrate that driver with the rest of the three drives. So at some point of my, of my experimentation, I went from two drivers into three drivers. And then I decided to experiment. What about maybe we can get into four and five drivers? How is this going to sound? And every time I increase the number of drivers, the sound, yes, it gained in some sort of feeling that we have extension everywhere in both directions. In reality, it was only the top and the bottom octave somewhere. The cohesion just started suffering significantly. And the more drivers I got, the more, the more difficult it became to integrate. And one day I decided I can connect this one driver, one full range 15 inch Biflex Altec driver to, to an amplifier. And that was a revelation to me. I was surprised to hear how that driver sounded without a crossover. The sound was nothing short of breathtaking in terms of dynamics. All of a sudden, this driver started singing and started realizing that this 15H now actually is more immediate and more dynamic sounding than the three drivers that I have on the baffle. The driver without the crossover, though it appeared to be very slow and and not agile, now started becoming a very agile, very dynamic and very unleashed sort of dynamic driver. And this formed my view about the future experiments. By all means, the crossover that I had in that time is the least harmful crossover money can buy. But they had absolutely no resistor. So the drivers were matched in such a way that the sensitivity would not require any attenuation. So it has zero resistor in the crossover. That's a very important step. Because even a little bit change in the DCR of any of these passive components of a choke, uh, capacitors that go in there, affects significantly the immediacy of those drivers. So even a fraction of ohm has an effect on the dynamic behavior of those drivers. And then people put there a couple of ohms. That's just killing. That's just putting handbrake on everything. When I removed, basically bypassed the crossover and connected the driver directly to the amplifier, that the sound became unleashed as if handbrake was released technically. The dynamics and the flow and the liveliness of music just shoot up, up high in the sky. That, that is the, I, I didn't expect this. Even with the finest parts in the crossover, the crossover still does a lot of damage, but it does also a lot of damage to with the uh, transparency. These uh, passive components, whether it's a silver foil, copper foil, like a proper foil capacitor, extremely of highest quality money you can buy, they still do a significant amount of damage to the sound, simply because there are no perfect passive components. Wherever any, any sort of component goes anywhere the circuit, it does some sort of harm. And we can't improve the recording. We can only create a lot of uh, damage to the recording by using excessively all these passive components. Even the highest quality of these materials and components is going to cause a detriment to the sound quality. From some uh, point onwards, um, I met a very uh, smart and very genius engineer who said, why, why you even bother with crossovers? We can create a full range driver and augment its extreme frequencies uh, by acoustic means. That, for example, in a horn, that would be the, the bass horn that would enhance its low frequencies. But the high frequencies could be enhanced by using a small wizard cone that is glued to the same cone, basically using the same voice coil, and that would extend the high frequency. So a full range driver, technically speaking, plays the whole thing. You don't need multiple drivers. And I was first, you know, thinking, yeah, but what about the high and the low frequencies? You know, this, this kind of worried me a bit, but until we started experimenting and trying and different designs, the first moment 
you listen to a single point source driver. It, it changes the perception about how music should play. And I think this needs to be uh, kept in mind because the greatest recordings of anything are the, those recordings that are recorded with a single microphone, with a single point uh, microphone direct, directed at the source. And the playback, why should it be any different? The ideal playback is the one that is reproduced by a single point source. And now I started to understand why actually, why I preferred my headphones over speakers. Because the headphones have no crossover. They are connected directly to the headphone amplifier by means of two conductors. That's it. So the voice coil go directly to the amplifier. And the only thing that is in between is the conductor. Now, there's again uh, something that I like to point out. So somebody mentioned this. Oh, this guy is saving money on the crossover. <laughs> really? Uh, one, one needs to think about how difficult it is to make design a full range driver that plays an all frequency response. So designing actually the acoustic envelope, which is going to enable to play that full range driver at a full frequency response. That is a challenge. Uh, designing a crossover just to blend the drivers together to kind of sort of perform, the, which are never cohesively, you know, operating together. That's dirty cheap. The expensive part is to build all these acoustic envelopes and design everything by trial and error, how to enhance the, the frequency responses. And that's why we uh, came up with a single crossoverless full range driver design. Um, like every all other products, we have an orange. Everything more or less started from ground up. Working with an uh, open baffle, it kind of enables you to understand what sound qualities you get and how to basically work yourself around. And that's where basically the monitors come in. They reproduce low frequencies without requiring super large baffles and large, large drivers. And uh, the nine by inch by three inch uh, uh, driver design enables to have us multiple drivers in one comb. So that is one, that's like our sort of uh, entry to mid-level acoustic system. And then if one wants to have a real low frequency, unimpeded energy delivered to our eardrums, there's no way uh, around having a bass horn. So in order to have a bass horn to play low frequencies, that again, that bass horn has to be huge. So we have to make a folded uh, a horn, a bass horn design to enhance its depth and its area. So that is the next step up. So we have the horns coming into a play, but this is cream de la cream. So this is, this is a mind blowing experience to hear the bass horns to perform in that, that low frequencies. And the quality of that bass surpasses any cabinet and any open baffle there is physically. So basically to summarize, we could have designed uh, a multi-way crossover bass speaker like everybody else. That would have been much easier, uh, less costly, uh, less time consuming. To be honest, there are a lot of these drivers out there and you can just use a couple of passive components and cross them over. So you have a, a working design like everybody else. The cost of building different acoustic envelopes, cabinets, horns, surpasses way the cost of buying yourself a couple of uh, different values of these uh, capacitors, uh, resistors and uh, inductors. Once one hears uh, a full range driver playing on its own and playing all the frequency range without the crossover, I guarantee everybody, nobody will want to go back to any crossover uh, based loudspeaker. So why would we want to go into something that is inferior? We wanted to create something that is really outstanding. So there we have it.